Growing on me on XFM 104.9. Going well, isn't it? I've enjoyed it so far. It's been a bit, oh, a bit naughty and everything. Yeah, it was a bit, bit like, smart. Uh, oh. Nothing wrong with that. No. Carl, All right. having a good day? Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Uh, what mood are you in this week? Because we always trying to assess each week, you know, I was a bit edgy. He's got a red head. What's, what's all that? You've got a red head all around the side and the front. Mm. What's that? Sunburn? No, no, I think I'm, I'm allergic to having my head rubbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Now, who would rub your head? That sounds a bizarre thing. Your girlfriend? Weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, who are you rubbing your head? Well, yeah, but um, I was squeezing his head, fair enough, and he was screaming in agony. And then he went and made me a cup of coffee. Mm. And as he came over... Just spilled boiling hot coffee on my legs. I'm all turning shorts. And he went, sorry. Just like that. Just, it's like, it's like a series of jackass out there this morning. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, I'm, but, I mean, my legs are burnt. Your head's a little bit red. Mm. But apart from that, having a good day? Not bad. I was on the way in today, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. Walking in? Walking in, always walking in. I get left early and stuff. Oh. <laughs> I like to get in early, get some bits done and that. Yeah. Uh, Monkey news, songs of phrase. That sort of thing. And living in London, right, a lot of, there's a lot of shops that open early and stuff, do you know what I mean? People say that's a good thing about London. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like 24-hour city and stuff, yeah. right? I'm walking in and there's like, you know, you've got your news agents open. Obviously. You know, selling newspapers and that, that's yeah. good, they've got to be open early. Yeah. Then you've got your, your coffee shops, your Starbucks, yeah. your... have a cup of coffee in the morning. Do you morning. know what I mean? Yeah. Breakfast, they're, yeah. they're doing well in the morning. Yeah. Um, then you see like the odd restaurant and you think, well... Maybe they sort of got the doors open, but they're preparing for lunch, so you think, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, I'll right. let that pass. Yeah. Carrying on walking down the road. Bondage shop. <laughs> open. Sure. Yeah. About yeah. half past ten. Yeah. Busy, was it? <laughs> There's a couple in. <laughs> really? That's some good offers. <laughs> About half past ten for a bondage shop. I'm assuming if you're into bondage, though, you, you stock up at any time, day or night. I mean, you don't... Yeah. Well, I assume it... I suppose take, you get up and you go, oh, I've got nothing on, I need to be a bit, oh, I need to be a bit tied down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need some rope. These clothes are too baggy, I need more yeah. belts. Oh, God. I need more straps. Yeah, oh. Get yeah. some rubber on my face. <laughs> Weird, though, isn't it? <laughs> what were you doing in there? So, just having a browse. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh. So, a bit worried, really, because the things that I've noticed this week, like that, that's probably a little bit smarter. You've brought your soup in. I just found it out there. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. It is ro ro Rooster's Pride, cock soup, noodle soup mix, chicken flavour. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, th th do they not know that is obviously just going to be used on the Graham Norton show and Chris Tarrant when he's doing his show abroad? Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? What, how could they call it cock soup in this day and I age? Don't keep saying it. Well, no, it's fine because you say yeah, cock as long as it means the male. We've done this. Oh, do you mean do you mean a chicken? Yeah, look, it's a picture of a chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. What did you think it meant? No, I don't know. I, I oh, lost my head. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, there's something else that's a bit sort of a bit blue. A little bit blue, but then it's real as well. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's, that, it's that a problem. It. Go on. There's a program. We couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd made it up, but because it's real. It's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. We also couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd have meant a male. Penis. Thankfully, we don't. So. We mean a, a little yeah. chicken. Go on. Um, <laughs> yeah, this program was on on. Yeah. I think it was Wednesday night, something. Mm. About this little lad. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was a fella and a and a woman at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was do it you like mean? A, like a cartoon <laughs> with a secret identity. <laughs> by na by yeah. night. What do you mean? He had both. By day, a boy. By he night, had, a yeah, woman. He had it all. What? Had what? 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 You, oh, sorry, I won't. So. So he had male and female genitalia. Yeah. So what what do you call someone that's born like that? Weird. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then what's the term for it? Uh, Go on. You know it. We've talked about it before. Aphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. So close. Uh, Hermaphrodite. Yeah. Hermaphrodite. Yeah. yeah. That's weird, though, isn't it? Yeah. And he had, uh, he had them all... Yeah. And he had the... Well, what happened was he was born, right? Obviously. And uh, and the doctor said, there you go. <laughs> Have a li lovely little boy and girl. So the mum was like, what? So he said... No, I don't think the doctor was sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, what? I, I don't think the doctor was um, sort of dissing them. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Well, what do you mean, doctor? I'm going to have a look. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a minch. All right, see you later. <laughs> uh, what are you going to call Hit. Uh, but doctor, what do you mean? Have a look. He wasn't sarcastic. He didn't yeah, give doctor, clues. Tell me what you mean. Give me a straight answer. He probably went, oh shit, she's got a cock. He didn't go. He wasn't sarky to the parents. 
no, anyway, no, but I'm just getting across. Do you know what I mean? I always had a little bit just to. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. You should be a newsreader. Be brilliant. So, uh, so yeah. So there's a little kid lying there. Yeah. And uh, and the and the mum says, you know, what what am I going to do then? So, the doctor. I mean, I'm condensing this. It was like sure. an hour long. Sure. Hour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so he says, "What will you know?" She said, "What will I do?" And the doctor said, "Well, he's not sort of well hung." Right. Oh, for. F- so he's, he's not <clears throat> sort of well hung. <laughs> this doctor has term. been. I assume has been struck off since for saying these things. It was a real doctor. It wasn't Doctor Fox. <laughs> yeah. Right. Go so on. so the doctor said, "So I recommend that we make it a woman." Right. Right. So they sort of do a little bit of jiggery poker. Yeah, a little bit of work. And I don't think <clears> that's <throat> true, Carl. No, it is. It was on the program. But I think they can tell uh, really what they were meant to be from their chromosomes, though, can't they? They can tell whether they're X, Y, Y. <laughs> yeah, not just. It's not it's very just, well at home. No, I yeah. tell you what, because back then when this was going yeah, on, yeah, no, right, I'm just thinking they might not have had the, right. the doctors then thought if you had a kid, right, and you thought it's a bit ugly, maybe it'll have a better life if it was a a fella. If it was a girl and it's a bit ugly and you think it's going to get hard time. Right. Don't talk shite. What? 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 The doctor would go, <laughs> right, you've had, you've, had a, you've had a young girl. I'll tell you what, she's a pig. Let's pop a cock on her. <laughs> Don't no, no, talk no, I'm not saying, shite. I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, say if you have a, uh, like I say, a girl. I, I just think it's harder. If a girl's ugly and yeah. she's growing up, yeah. she has a harder time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree with that? Possibly, yeah, but, but, but you don't change don't someone change, when they... they don't, but when, no, yeah. You don't change their gender no, because no, no, they're I'm a just bit saying of a minger. What, what I'm saying is the elephant man would have had a harder time if it was elephant woman, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but listen to me, listen, listen. What the doctor was saying is, if you get a baby before it's two, yeah. back then they thought you could sort of say, well, give it... Instead of giving it a go-kart, give it dolls to play with. Right, back when? What are we talking about? The Middle Ages? We put a song on. Come back. To this. Yeah, it's oh. Bruce Springsteen, Atlantic City, on XFM 104.9. Okay, look, have another go, Carl. What were you saying? As a, an hermaphrodite, yeah, it was born for both sets. The doctor said he's not well hung. Let's lose that. Let's get rid of that. Let's make, make it, it into a girl. Okay, I'm with you so far. Go on then. So, anyway, gets away with it a little bit in the in the early years. <laughs> right. right. Starts going to school, Ooh. gets away with it a little bit. Sure. Right? But then, do you know when you get to that age and your head goes all funny? Like when, you, when you're when a teenager and you you sort of, you, I don't know, your school goes... Mine never did. What are you talking about? No. Yes. That's what do you mean your head goes all funny? teenage years when you look a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? You go from being quite a good-looking person and then you, your body starts growing. At a different rate, so, right. yeah, you, don't, so you, never know where, you never know till 21 whether you're going to be a looker or not, or whether yeah, it's just... Yeah, yeah, I know, right. go on. Yeah, I'm still waiting. So, uh... Your head grew outwards at exactly the same rate, didn't it? That's why it's so Your head grew faster than your hair. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lovely head of hair, exactly. but just, just below the skull. Yeah. He's got a little afro in there, yeah. but it just couldn't get through the follicles. It couldn't catch up the skull. <laughs> Expanding. Oh, bless him. Oh, come on, come on, Baldy. But the thing is, right, so you see these pictures of the lad stroke woman yeah. who's trying to be a woman at the age of 14, 15. Sure. Yeah. She's got one of them big heads, right. like right, a okay. lad. Um, doesn't, you know, she starts having a hard time. She doesn't want to play with her mates, with the dolls and all that. She's more into go-karting and that sort of sure. thing. Yeah. Um, gets to an older age, yep. decides to go back, is now sort of with a woman and having a... Life of a fella. But did he put, have it? Put, did the doctor keep it for him in case he needed it? No, he's had his own one put on though. Has he? Where'd he get that from? Don't know. Don't know. Maybe that bondage shop. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do when they do that? Do they put on a? What do they do? Maybe someone could call in and tell us. If you're a woman and you have a. <laughs> do you want to speak to someone who's got that information? Yeah, I do want to know. What do they? Do if they you've got that information, I don't want to talk to. Do them. they construct one? Do they construct it from plasticine? Or do they whack on a dead one? What? What? Whack on a dead one? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? That's not, it's not, what do you mean? No. When a, when a woman has a knob put on yeah. to have a sex change, where do they get it from? That, is it constructed? Do they find like, I don't from know. From a donor. A, a, a donut? <laughs> from a donor. Oh, well, yeah. A donor? A what? donor, yeah. Yeah, but presumably 
it's like maybe a, there's someone who well, wants to become, dead, I mean. No, I thought maybe there's... People, it's not like giving someone a kidney and then sort but of like celebrating maybe with them. Maybe if you're a guy and you want to become a woman, you've got one to spare. That's true. Yeah. But a swap? Yeah, just yeah. do a little swap, probably on the internet or something. Or oh, Noel Edmonds. <laughs> What do you mean? What, on Swap what? Shop. He's not a man. No, no, but he could go, uh, we've got a, a, lo- a fella here who uh, <laughs> got a lovely, uh, nearly new, uh, unused piece. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wants, yeah Keith Chegrin out wants, in kind of Bognor Regis. Wants a couple of tits and a fanny for that, so uh, <laughs> call in. Uh, it but, reminds me of the, um, do you remember the Jane, the John Wayne Bobbitt story? Which yeah. has always seemed odd to me. I never really kind of got all the information. Do you remember that one, Carl, where the woman cut off mm. her husband's penis because he when was, he was sleeping. or something? He, I think it was she, and she, ra- she drove off. I think you wrote it in the woods. Quite she dro- yeah, she- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so much better than the, the exactly, alarm clock. Yeah. yeah. And she threw it off. She threw she it out, out of the, the car window. into the woods. Yeah. And he went and found it. Yeah. But imagine if he'd got to the hospital and sewn it, they'd sewn it back on and he'd gone, that's bigger than I remember. <laughs> that's, that's I'm that's not sure not this mine. is mine. How many of you got? That's where we dumped all the knots. <laughs> we dumped all the knots right there. Yeah. That, oh, that, that was oh. an extraordinary story. And then, bizarrely, he became a porn star. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange life that man's had. Well, it is a bit of a shock to the system, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, cutting your knob off. I know. I know. Do, do you remember that um, French bloke, the performance artist of the, uh, 1910? Do you remember him? No, uh, no. He, uh, as a performance art, he cut his, he had it in a theatre, he cut his knob off to a crowd of people. Now, what? That's, yeah. That's only a one night trick, though, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But what if there'd been a bang <laughs> outside? They went they, encore. He went, what? Yeah. Or they looked outside because a, <laughs> a car backfired. He yeah. went, do you see that? I go, ah, I go, ah, oh, f- <laughs> just cut the. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Think of that. Sacre bleu. I know. French are funny, aren't they? Cutting your knob off for, for your art. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> As we're having so much fun with penises, yeah. I thought perhaps I should just uh, mention. That's a, that's a slogan. <laughs> We should uh, just mention this story briefly. It's in the paper today. A Russian is selling what he claims is Hitler's mummified penis for £12,000. Ivan Zudurprov says his ex-Red Army soldier dad hacked it off as a souvenir after storming the tyrant's Berlin bunker after his suicide in 1945. Yeah. Not... Why did did he wait till now? Yeah. He's found out that... uh, Yeah, that might might get a bit of... £12,000. £12,000. Which doesn't seem a great deal. Doesn't seem a great deal of money, really. Well, it's useless, isn't it? <laughs> True. You're not going to be able to use it. It's not no. going to be able to. It's not going to be a donor. Imagine that if you walk round. <laughs> yeah, you'll never. Be- <laughs> making love to a girl. You'll never believe who this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You never believe who's doing you <laughs> yeah, love. Exactly. This is going to freak you out. <laughs> this is yeah. Just relax. Exactly. Okay, sit down now. Was that I got right? a little surprise? For it you. was brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. So you enjoyed it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, are Did you, you a fan? Of the Third Reich. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, awful racist. No. Okay, okay, let's go a different tack. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did like the sex. I love the sex. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be Hitler's knob, is it? But um, I like the idea that, I mean, you're you're a ex Red. You're in the Red Army. Yeah. You've just stormed Berlin. Yeah. 1945. You crash into the you've bunker. Gone through, you've gone through terrible, 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 terrible. How you've lost 20 million it's comrades. Unbelievable. Oh, uh, oppression it's everywhere. Been going on for years you're in there you see the man the story, the, yeah here he is he's dead he's dead he's oh the figurehead and leader of one of the most despicable you, you know you turn to your friends there's a tear in your eye yeah and your immediate thought <laughs> is i ought to chop off his todger yeah yeah, yeah. well no i said bagsy i, I said bagsy, bagsy is win- winkle i said bagsy is winkle outside <laughs> whoever it was yeah you know it's gonna be hitler Brilliant. It's just, I, I can't, it just doesn't make sense. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. And I don't know how, how is he expecting to prove this? Because I want some proof. Well, this, I think that's why he said that. Um, he probably started off with, uh, oh, I've got Hitler's face. And I went, brilliant. Oh, let's have a look at it. What do you mean, let's have a look? Well, just check Hitler's face. Cause obviously, I know what he looks like. Oh, yeah. No, it's not, ah, oh, yeah, you know what he, no, it's not his face. What, what, what wouldn't you know what it looked like? Well, I mean, no one's ever seen his genitals. That's what I've got. Yeah. I've got his, I've got his. It's got no. a little swastika on it. Is that, is little, that proof, is it? Yeah, little tattoo. Have you got his ball? Well, no, the Albert Hall's got one, his mother's got the other, so I don't know. See, the it's... Albert Hall, I would have thought, would probably be paying that £12,000, because apparently they've they've already got his ball. Yeah, they've got one of his balls. They've got so one of his balls, yeah, in the Albert Hall, need... his mother's got the other. Yeah. But if they got the, the Todger's If they can right, track down the one his mother's got, they would have a complete set of Hitler's... I'm just hoping it doesn't fall into the hands of some kind of crazed genetic scientist. What, I could clone it from his knob? I could clone a Hitler. Back to, oh, I, I don't even want to think about the future if that's the sort of way we're going. <laughs> exactly. If that's the sort of way we're going, Carl, I'd rather not know about it. <laughs> what Carl, do you make of it, Carl? Weird, isn't it? It is weird. I mean, I don't want to go on for this too long. We've probably got about a minute left for the first half hour, and I reckon should can this sort of... What, 30 minutes about. of genital talk? 
Oh, just, just, just quickly, on a Saturday there's, afternoon. There's, there's on. one in a museum. I think it's like that London Museum. What? One what? Well, do you know like how people are buying weird stuff and that to put in museums? Yeah. There's this device. That, but I mean, think about it. Years and years ago, they used to torture people, didn't they? Yeah. Really badly. Mm. And the device yeah, that they've got... Yeah, there's no real good torture, but go on, I see your point. Yeah, but this this device, right, think about it, you've done something really bad years ago. Yeah. Right, and you're thinking, oh, what are they going to do? Do you know what I mean? Could they do anything here? It could be the end for me. The device they've got is this thing that you put on your uh, your bits, as a fella, uh, uh, and it's sort of metal, uh, so it means you can't sort of, you know, get excited. <laughs> it puts a stop to you, sort of... That wasn't a torture device. I think it was a Victorian thing to stop um, adolescent boys wanking. They used to have things like wrist things as well with, like, spikes on them. It's not a torture device. Is it not? Well, not really. It's, imagine that being captured by no, a... Right, you're never going to get an hard on again. All right. It, not really a torture device, is it? Well, there wasn't that many nice-looking women wandering about anyway about them, was there? They didn't... <laughs> Don't get excited about stuff. What are you talking about? Well, they're filthy, they stunk and everything back then. <laughs> I've been all of it. All right, we've covered that. <laughs> no more of that talk now, right? Let's move on. Uh, filthy, stinky, All Victorian and women, filthy uh, and stinky. Yeah. Oh, dear. Bit of Rolling Stones yeah, then, set up it. the old songs of yeah, phrase. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What, Stones, Beast of Burden. We've not played it before. It's an absolute gem. XFM 104.9. Right, it's the... Uh, it's the quiz of the week. If you want to go out and do some shopping, <laughs> this is probably a good time. We can come back again for about quarter past. But two. don't forget, um, what I will say is, even though these clues... Uh, we're going to do songs of phrase, by the way, where uh, Carl picks out a phrase that he might have said once, mm. uh, <laughs> tries to find words from songs to put it together. You've got to guess as many as you can, song or artist, I can't remember. Um, but even though you might look at it and go, that's mental, I don't know any of them, you might win if you get two right. I mean, I think the winner last week got about three out of three. Well, I have seven. to be honest with you. I mean, last week, I mean, Rockbusters, surprisingly, was a very, very popular quiz. Yeah. It just happened to be awful. Yeah. This one is pitiful. I mean, it's truly atrocious. Yeah. And it really doesn't even have a fan base. I mean, there's no one championing this one, Carl. Last week, seriously, mate, I got about oh, Carl's seven, face. seven or eight uh, replies. That is, that, oh, God, that's terrible. That was like when you told a kid that you couldn't afford a Christmas present this year. Look at his face. Yeah, it is a bit distraught. Carl, it's, it's, it's like Chris Evans' face when they said they were cancelling girls and boys. It's like, well, <laughs> but I can, I can come up with great TV game shows like that. No, you can't, Chris. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, his little glasses slid down his yeah. nose. I'm the guy who don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah. What well, was that money you owe me? No, you owe us. Oh, for f <laughs> believe it. All right. So, will I just play it to you and whatever, you, you Carl? Try and work out what the phrase is. Um, sorry, it's a phrase that might have once been uttered on this show. It was said last week. Oh right. All right. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Here we go. Right. I right. Can't hear right. It. I know what that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what was right? it? What it is is it's something like right. <laughs> You're only sixteen, but you look twenty six. The Chinese look older than they are, or something. Because he said that the Chinese. Age wow, that is mental, Carl. <laughs> it's the most convoluted, ridiculous, racist <laughs> piece of material ever to be uttered on radio. Play it again. <laughs> I know you're just 16, but okay, <laughs> you're just 16 and looking all 21. That's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you've gone mental. Right. Oh, that is amazing. So. There you go, the well-known phrase, you're, <laughs> you're 16, looking all of 21, that's because the Chinese look older. Well-known phrase there, sweeping the nation. That's uh, That'll be up there with was up um, and shut that door. If they do a poll, right. So, <laughs> OK, play it once more. We're, laugh, we're after the artists. Just yeah. the artists. Yeah. Right. I know you're just 16. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let me tell you what the uh, prizes oh. are. We've got, uh, I assume this is the new album from Mower. Um, everyone's going crazy from Mower. <laughs> I've not heard people stop talking about Mower. <laughs> but uh, there it is. We've got the new album from the Webb Brothers, um, which might be quite good. Uh, the Polyphonic Spree album. The best dance album in the world ever, which is ideal perhaps if you're having a barbecue and you've got lots of eight-year-old children coming. <laughs> the Polyphonic Spree, I look at them and I think, well, you know, you're a pretty good band. 
But um, if that album sounds like a million, you're going to make about 40 quid each. I know, it's extraordinary. Well, it's, I mean... They're the sort of indie equivalent of the So Solid crew. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to make any money. The manager's getting 20%. Exactly, yeah. And um, also on DVD, uh, Red Dwarf Series 1. So um, some absolutely barnstorming crazy <laughs> <laughs> uh, And if you can identify what artist to use in this well-known racist phrase, that's because the Chinese look older. Play it once more, Carl. One more time. <laughs> oh, Ricky God. Dot Gervais this at xfm.co.uk. Play it, record. This is radio. The Smiths on XFM 104.9. Well, we've got the... We've done the first half hour, which is now mainly... Genital related. <laughs> then we've kicked in with uh, some racism. <laughs> uh, you have well, to guess what artist. It seems appropriate uh, at this juncture just to mention something that's in the paper today. Uh, Dominic Mohan, I know you're a big fan, and as yeah. am I, he uh, is just writing about the demise of Radio One, or as he as he perceives it, and talking about the Radio One breakfast show. And apparently, it's lost lots of listeners. And he says, uh, talking of the BBC, it must act swiftly to replace Sarah Cox and look to exciting and inspirational figures like Jonathan Ross, Anne and Deck, Johnny Vaughan, or Ricky Gervais to try and save. Radio One. He's right. I mean, He's right. has he ever heard this show? <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? All those other acts, they're dynamite. I can't genuinely... I, uh, that's someone who said I quite like Ricky Gervais' show, but he's never... He can't have listened. I mean, uh, can you imagine what we just played? Or in fact, can you imagine the last 50 minutes on Radio One, on The Breakfast Show? <laughs> well, we, yeah, we can pre-record it, though, so I wouldn't have to get up early. <laughs> sure. That's not your point, is it? That's not really no, it. your point is the quality of what we're doing, <laughs> exactly. not well, how early it is. Sure, sure. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, What yeah. would you provide, though, Ricky, do you think, if you went to Radio One? What sort of... Cause, I mean, obviously, whack, whack, oops. <laughs> I can do all that. Because I'm mean, uh, obviously our, um, our time at uh, XFM is going to basically... We're I'd, be, on empty, I'd we? be the furry shreddy. Right. Yeah, so, so I'd get that. Uh, would you have some wacky catchphrases? I think I would. You'd bring back holy fuck, presumably. Holy fuck, yeah. Oh, ding dong. <laughs> oh, hello. It's my little Chinese neighbour. Hello. What's your name? My name is holy fuck. Oh, hello. Really? Look at Carl, he's just going out. Oh, I know, like, you didn't even do the Chinese accent that time. <laughs> well, that'd be racist. OK, sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. it's just his name's holy fuck and there's nothing... Nothing wrong well, with that. funny about that. So, yeah, you'd have that. You'd have, you'd you'd have, have crazy that. comedy characters. You'd probably have some wacky quizzes. Yeah. Oh! Oh, look, it's dirty old queer. I <laughs> know! Oh, no! <laughs> uh, now, I've not... He's a new character to me. I'm quite excited. He sounds very modern and contemporary. <laughs> yeah. A new spin yeah. on, uh, yeah. on an old idea. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit more. Oh, wow. Um, mm, he's an actor, isn't he? And, right. he, uh, and he likes to... Uh, <laughs> Take it up. All right, well, that's just um, if anyone from Radio 1 is listening and yeah. they've, uh, they've listened to Dominic Mohan in the paper, they thought, yes, you're right, we need some new blood at Radio 1. Ricky Gervais, he's got a myriad of comedy characters. Yeah. Whack, whack, oops. I can do sound effects. <laughs> you can do sound effects. So... You could probably do funny voices like Chris Moyles, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, not as good, but I, I, mean, I can... I... What about comedy songs like Moyles? Again, not as good, but I mean... Do you uh, remember it... when Moyles rather hilariously <laughs> changed the words of This Is My Moment by Martin McCutcheon to This Is My Motor? <laughs> we listened to it, oh, though, didn't we? unbelievable. <laughs> I remember when he was doing a competition, this was pathetic, wasn't it? We were listening to uh, uh, Radio 1 once on our house, right? And uh, I don't know why, we just wanted to... Uh, I think it was research, wasn't it, for the office? Yeah. And um, he was doing this... Uh, he had to phone in with... We were um, listening to idiots. And <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying that. Um, and he was doing this competition, you had to call in with um, some uh, songs that are golf-related. And people were throwing up going, uh, uh, drive the cars. He was going, drive the cars, good. And I was on that phone. I must have wasted about 40 quid. And I wanted to get through and go, hello, Chris, it's not Milesy, Milesy, yeah. It's Derek here, Derek here, I've got one, got one. Oh, go on then, Derek, what is it? Um, something like Spandau Ballet with golfy, golfy, <laughs> golf cart and that. <laughs> and I just wanted to... <laughs> and I waited. And I, just, uh, I thought yeah. the joke's on us. Yeah. I waited the phone bill just to say something <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh. This show's better than this. Yeah, anyway, if you've got any hilarious... Yes, golf-related song titles <laughs> that you'd What's like to number? email in. What's the number? Oh, I'd like an email in. <laughs> Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, uh, what would a song title be if perhaps we were doing something about, I don't know, air travel? Yeah. If you've got any crazy ideas, email in. We'd love to hear them. Yeah, brilliant. I've got, I've got a thought of another golf one. OK. You know, Duran Duran? Mm. Um, summit down the fairway or something, if they wrote that. <laughs> All right. That's Girls the on the putting green yeah. or something. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> Have you introduced her? Mm, my name's Holy Fuck. I'm dirty old queer. <laughs> I could do all that. Ding dong. Whack, whack, oops. <laughs> Fallen Angel. 
See, they're the odd one out, you see, because because of what they're like and who they are and how successful they are, I can imagine saying, will you please welcome to the stage, Elbow. Indeed. But yeah. I wouldn't have. I'd have. On paper, I'd have thought that was a... A terrible band name. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. There are exceptions to the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Boomtown Rats. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'd have thought that was a... I yeah. mean, I think it is a bad name. It is a bad name. But you can't imagine it yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a uh, bad name. So call in if you've got email addresses and that's it's calling with funny <laughs> observations on life and shit. <laughs> well, it's going yeah, well, isn't it? we know what, uh, That's uh, halfway through. No, well, it's bad, Carl, what do you think? It's, it's, yeah, it's been all right. It's been all right. Yeah. We've, uh, we've covered a lot of bases. We haven't, um, we haven't taught, taught them anything. Not taught them anything? Mm. No, I think that, I mean, I well, think... we taught them to tune into a different station. <laughs> yeah, but... I think Heart 106.2 is probably picking up a few few of our listeners as we speak. Yeah. Who's on at the moment? I don't know. Doesn't matter on there, does it? They just sort of... Don't slag them off. No, I'm not slagging them off. I'm just saying I don't think... You tune in because you want to hear Simply Red and that, don't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, they play other great stuff as well. <laughs> magic is the one that I love because I only ever listen to it in a cab. Yeah. If I'm in a mini cab, good. Magic, that, that's good. That is a good station. But Magic station. is dynamite. But I know yeah. for Magic, the DJs have got like five hour shifts. It's yeah. incredible. They're on. And, the, and they do read their own news. I know. It's like they, <laughs> it's like they've cut out any expenditure on that channel. Yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah. some old records. Yeah. And one guy has to go on for five hours, read his own news, his own travel. It's they, there's nothing else. I saw a bloke, I know a bloke struggling once. He sort of wants to be a bit of a sort of comedian, and uh, he does one link. It's sort of one, sort of fifteen second link between each record. Because it goes, that's Celine Dion. Uh, there's a story in the uh, paper again that um, people were late for work uh, on the underground because there was leaves on the track. Just wondering if uh, leaves are ever late for work because there's people on the track. <laughs> it's simply red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. I still think he's got to come up with them for like five <laughs> yeah, yeah. hours. He's stretch. been sweating. Uh, thought I was going, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. Uh, uh, Cher's just, almost finished. I was just thinking, this, thinking the story about um, uh, war on Iraq. I imagine if... I can't do this anymore. I can't imagine if, <laughs> if humans had become extinct. With leaves. Dinosaurs would kill Iraq. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> Look at Carl's face when I said that. <laughs> the man moth. Yeah. They've cloned a man moth. No, but that's that's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What, education? What, teaching, yeah. Well, okay, um, what, what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Uh, Can you educate us on anything? I've been reading bits So could we bring back just for one, one, for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah? Uh, do you think it warrants that? I don't, I don't know enough about it. Do you know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. Play the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, educating Ricky. He's getting smarter. A <laughs> couple of things happened in the week that I read about. OK. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about that Galileo fella. OK. Uh, was it about 1636? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Go on. Was it? Was it? I think it might oh, have been earlier. Bad. Go on. Did some stuff with light and that. He, uh... Yeah, he did lots of physical experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He did, he did some stuff of... with light and that. Well, what did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did... He, well, he... Uh, I think he invented the first... Telescope. Uh, yeah, telescope. So I, I, I think it's a particular lens, though, that... Um, and uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different uh, weighted uh, balls from pizza, Pisa, and uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that it doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter, but air resistance does and stuff like that. I think so. he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. Sure. But d d did they need to know He's stuff... He's just thinking about pizza. Yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean, did they need to know stuff like that? It's just... it's just. There weren't people going around going, I've got to drop these two things off the uh, leaning tower of pizza. I, I just know. don't know which one's going to land first. Yeah, I need to know. What do you need to Bring know Bring me that? Galileo. Yeah. It's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about then, I'd be like, stop messing with that. We need a telly. Or, <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> I yeah. bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I know. That, that'd be brilliant. That's what I do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and a, and car a cement that I mixer. Just ran along the road with. Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. Anyway, so I learned that. And yeah. then. Um, what? what? <laughs> he learned his name. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Other people I know the name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly. Go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. Right, and who was this man, and, and from what... French you know, fella, he... French fella. Okay. Did, last week. Did he mean walk around naked? He just said um, women should wear skirts rather than trousers because no woman looks good in a pair of pants. Right. How and, old was he? Uh, he was probably about 67. Uh-huh. About that, 67, 68. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wasn't happy with that. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye. Over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire news. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See, that, that to me, wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be applicable to I life. Ju- I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of... Do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's, that's a good little piece. But, but, I mean, but surely me... Can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going? Or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? Because I thought after that's, that? that's a bit that's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay. It ends thinking. there with me. There's nothing else. <laughs> there's nowhere else for me to go on that. He closes your mind's the game. still worrying. Yeah. Go on. What did you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I know. Just watch it. Yeah. Uh, it would be great, like a DVD. Be and like I, a added, imagine that uh, extra footage on the Office DVD. Yeah. Carl's Carl, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, what with I mean a commentary. Is, go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? On the estate that I grew up in. Yeah. On, on right? Uh, there was a woman about four houses down, right? <laughs> right. Rough. She, she's the <laughs> she one. She was, who, or the estate. She was, right? <laughs> yeah. She's the one whose kid took a horse into her house. Yes. Right. right. Now, we won't go over that again. No. If yeah. you're a new listener, I think we've covered... I think they get That's the idea, That's all you need to know. Right. Yeah. Now, she used to wear leggings. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the colour? normal were, persuasion... Were they, were they, they were, pink? No, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings. Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to... Um, She's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think yeah. you described well, the, her as. Looked like a light bulb. Which it is those kind of women that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> 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 yeah. She yeah. used to wear them, and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece. And <laughs> her, She used to work on one of those sex line things. Right. right? She used to do that. But <laughs> What, was she an engineer? The, 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 weird, <laughs> <laughs> the, weird, thing, the weird thing with her was... Um, she had big eyelids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go on. That that were too big. And this this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do you mean she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> what was she shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with, like, radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah, she had big a, eyelids? It was another one of them popular things around that way. Do you know, like, what do you mean popular things? <laughs> they, didn't go, they go, oh, I'll tell you what, they're all the rage. Can I get some big eyelids, please? <laughs> no, 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 it was just, like, one of them things that people suffered with just big eyelids they could hardly open their eyes <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean what do you mean that, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up people had big eyelids they could hardly open their eyes what does that mean what sort of freak town were you born in you had webbed feet people with big heads you got women with big eyelids what does big eyelids mean are you confusing her with the horse <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? Look, what? Just, just too much skin. It was like the the, the neck of a chicken, but, <laughs> but on the eyes. What's your point, anyway? So there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you, though. That's when I read that story with people with trousers. Yeah. I went from that. Yeah. To a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. <laughs> still, I still know the point. But then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His his dad had it. Um, same problem, massive, massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I'm, I used to say to my mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or say, Pete, well, you <laughs> that's all right, but make sure his dad doesn't take you out in the car. Because he could hardly... <laughs> <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his head. 
<laughs> he had to tilt his head back to keep his eyes open. Make sure! Did he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> Oh. What a load of gobbledygook. Uh, well, that is... about this began as educating Ricky. I know, it's so like he was people thinking, with eyelids. But it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky will probably be thinking about people with big eyelids <laughs> oh, no, and women yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. Got nonsense. Convert. No. Oh, all right. Muse, time is running out on XFM 104.9. Just a couple of emails just to update you on what's coming in here. Go on. Um, Natasha has emailed us. She says that she's of Chinese origin, and at 27, she often got mistaken for 24. So your notion that Chinese people don't age well is obviously uh, factually incorrect. Yeah, well, we didn't need... Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, trust us, Natasha, we didn't need you to tell us that. We what? know Carl is talking absolute nonsense. Wait till you get to 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh dear, now this is, uh, this is quite a nice email from Paul. He says, uh, let Carl know that I have a Chinese friend called Oi. Imagine the confusing and amusing situations we're getting to. <laughs> we're out and about in yeah. busy Soho. Oi! <laughs> Is his surname come here? <laughs> Lightning wit from, uh, from Carl. Wait That's nice. till you're 30. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. I know. But no, um, actually, we've had a surprising response to uh, Songs of Phrase this week. Despite the fact everyone has agreed that it's a race list, <laughs> they've but nevertheless uh, had a go. So uh, keep your answers coming in. Um, Good. Because we may as well. You're a hit, Carl. You're a hit. What, have we still got monkey news? Yeah, that's still coming up. That's yeah. Guaranteed. Later on, later on. Uh, we're Don't not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. Uh, uh, we're not. No. No. Don't want to upset people on that. Sure. But there is a good freaky programme on this week. <laughs> go on. I think it's on Channel 4. Yeah. A woman a woman with a big head on it. No, I think it's BBC Two. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, Unless there's two on, because that would be a great week for you, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Won't be coming out. Is that the one when you said... Go on, say, say, right, say what you said when you saw it. Uh, the woman with the, with the head. Yeah. Just said it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> That's so mean. I don't want to discuss no, that. No, it's not, it's not mean. It is mean, Carl. It, again, Steve, if we were in a restaurant and I'm arranging to meet her and I said to the guy on the door, I'm meeting, you know, Lisa or whatever her name is, yeah? Right. What does he look like? Well, looks like a cartoon. <laughs> I'll be over there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't think he'll, he'll get mixed up. What would That's you say about saying. me and Steve again? If you were meeting us? Uh no, it just starts getting nasty, doesn't it? Um, I'm meeting uh, Carl Pilkerton. Uh, we're very busy. Uh, what does he look like? Um, he looks like Charlie Brown grew up. He's got a complete little round bald head and he's got a gormless look on his face. He's over there, mate. <laughs> yeah. All right? That's starting the ball rolling for you, Carl. I love that, that it's OK to say what you like about people if you go, yeah, but if I was looking for her in a restaurant... I know, but... <laughs> yeah. And why have you arranged to go on a date with this woman? Be a good night out. <laughs> for her or for you? Well, I'd like to have a chat with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Just find out what worries her and... Do you know what I mean? Because some girls People worry about like things. Yeah. Like their hair being a mess and that. Yeah. You know, with her, it's like, at least see your problems. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Fine, all right. Well, let's move on. We're not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. No. We, let's do something nice. Let's talk nicely you know, about things. What, what's happened nice in the world, Carl? What do you like in the world? When you get up and you go, oh, that was a brilliant day, I... dot, dot, dot. What do you do when you go, oh, that was brilliant? Uh. We had a game of, game of snooker. You like snooker, don't you? I mean, you and Steve played snooker last week. Yeah, but things are always ruined. Do you know what I mean? I might be having a nice time having a game of snooker, mm. and then, you know, we're having a proper battle, mm. and I'm trying to concentrate on taking a shot, and then you'll say things like, look, look at his little monkey hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going for the black. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or maybe I'll say, I'm just, just going to the toilet. Yeah. And then one of you will follow me in and peer over the, over the door. <laughs> oh, yeah! Tell that one. That was when you were actually in a cubicle sitting down, wasn't it? Yeah. And Steve Merchant's head appeared and went, all right. And you went, what if that wasn't me? Oh, that was great. Yeah, doing, oh, a, doing a George Michael on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is one of the far. benefits of being very tall. You can look over You can look car. over the stalls uh, in toy <laughs> laboratories. <laughs> <laughs> Like a giraffe house. You're sitting down there and you look up, right? And he's peering over yeah. the top. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. the fun we have. Oh, it's great, isn't it? But anything intelligent. It's like the monkeys. About. We are like the monkeys, aren't we, us three? I wanted to write a thing for the darkness. I want to write a like the, the new monkeys. Like a TV show. Yeah. Do you want to do that? 
Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Well, if they're listening, or their radio show, uh, record company are listening, or their manager, big fan of the Darkness, my favourite. Hang on, don't make a promise well, no, like no, that. No, my, my favourite band at the moment, let's, uh, we'll do a pilot. Them no, and the but they don't make Running round, speed it up, they can have their songs in it, they can write songs specially for us. What if they can act? Them, and it's them, they can act, they just act themselves running round. We're getting people like Henry, what's it, McGee and that, to come in and sort of be the actors. And, yeah. You know, all those posh actors that... That appear in Ali G and that. It sounds like a lot of hard work. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, forget <laughs> it. Knock on the head. Yeah, let's play Radiohead. <laughs> Radiohead and let down off OK Computer on XFM 104.9. Right, let's think of some nice stuff then. Annoyed I was yesterday. Go on. Just got off the train and um, a guy comes up to me and he says, uh, excuse me, can you spare some change? I'm uh, I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless. And I was so angry. I really, I was in a bad mood anyway, and I just wanted to say to him, well, there's your mistake. Go back to Liverpool. That's why you're homeless. You're in London. Well, he might have been homeless in Liverpool and thought... Well, why'd you come down here? Well, where would you rather be homeless? Liverpool or London? Well, Algarve. Mm. Well, no, but I mean, I'd certainly... Do you know what I mean? Why am I supposed to say I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless? Why is that supposed to be a persuading factor? Just annoyed me. I thought there was enough problems here. Already. He's going for a double sympathy, double sympathy vote. Yeah. I'm homeless and I'm in Liverpool. He could have just said I'm from Liverpool. I'd have given him some change. <laughs> Guys, he was from Manchester. Once I gave him, a, I gave him my sandwich. Yeah. There was yeah. a thing the other night, right? They did this program. Uh, it's only on in London, so if you listen out of London, you won't know about it. But it's about uh, Oxford Street, mm. right? And um, about all the thieving that goes it's on. It's like stuff. thieving. Yeah. Uh, you know, drug problems in yeah. the streets and that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what gets on people's nerves, those people with the boards, that, you know, golf sale and all that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> this, this bit that concentrated on the homeless problem, right? And uh, he said, you know, this fella looks after the homeless, he goes up to him and says, how are you doing? Are you hungry? Do you need food and that? He said, you know, a lot of people worry about the homeless, but we do try and look after them. And the Salvation Army were there, and they said, and this is where they can come if they need anything, if they need any food or uh, any clothes, if the if shoes are worn out. And he said, oh, can we have a look at that, right? So they go in this little room where all the clothes are, and they go, and there's, there's like, a, a load of jumpers for them in the winter, in the cold. And the camera sort of pans across. Load of ties. <laughs> <laughs> right. For the homeless. <laughs> what? Ties. For ties, ties for, for the homeless? For round, round the neck, like, to look smart. No, they use them as belts. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of... Or as a lead for their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about, ties? That's what they did. They said, and here's the room with all the stuff in it. Right? <laughs> for the Jumpers. <laughs> for the homeless. Jumpers, shirts. Uh, and some uh, trainers. Uh, and you saw a load of ties. Nobody yeah. wanted one. Some evening dress. And they got a formal function. Any cravats. Now, where's the cummerbunds? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of being homeless outside the Royal Albert Hall tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where the real pickings are. <laughs> I'm breaking in the back door of the Savoy this evening. <laughs> oh, but dear. Another, another charity thing that I was reading about the other day that they're doing... Do they give them trainers? Because I've seen a lot of tramps with new trainers, and I think there must be like a, a like equivalent of a soup kitchen where they get shoes. Because that's Probably. as it must be. Yeah. Otherwise, that's weird, isn't it? You get your, you blow any money, you, you beg all day and get a nice new pair of yeah. Nike. Yeah. No, well, don't waste it on clothes. Get some <laughs> tenants. Yeah. Get some yeah special brew. That's the best value. Yeah, Go on. Some smack. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. If you've got a lot of worries, you yeah. see it on the street. Little starter bag. Take your mind off it. Yeah, yeah, take your mind off it. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's weird you say that. Because, you know, a trainer's the most important thing. Because, like, you know all the problems in Africa. Sure. Right? A lot, lot of problems going on there. Yeah. Uh, the other day, they're asking for people to send their spectacles <laughs> to Africa. <laughs> right. Would you be happy if you were over there and, like, you're hungry and that? <laughs> and then they say, here you go. <laughs> well, yeah, but it must be for a reason. I Just don't think say, it's... they've got bad eyes and that. Yeah, I know, but I don't think they go around. It's not like when you see those things on Live Aid and there's people dying, yeah. but they're putting specks on them. No, I think that's what it is. No, it's not, Carl. They I sort out food and medication before they put a little pair of specks on the lads. That isn't how he came across in the advert. <laughs> I think they probably walk hand in hand. You know, the people handing out the food are also, you know, walking alongside guys with the specs and they're handing them out as well. But what have they got to look at? <laughs> what? They don't own anything. <laughs> they'll re they'll realise how bad everything is. God, it's rubbish here, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you, I try and help out the world. I've joined a little charity thing. They pay me five pounds a month. Yeah. yeah. I'm all up for helping. Yeah. But sure. sometimes you think, what can we do? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. What can we do? 
OK, what can we do? We can't do anything. OK. <laughs> Play <Nothing. laughs> <Quite> a record. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the debt the other day. I was reading up on the amount of debt that South Africa are in and that, and it's just like, huh? that's without any shops. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If they had shops to spend the money on, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be murder. <laughs> that third world debt isn't because they bought too many <laughs> smeg fridges from us. It's <laughs> shopping. Look, who, who's been shopping? <laughs> I have. Oh, well, you've gone over the top. You're on a budget now. <laughs> yeah. You're getting nothing but grain and blankets for the next year because you go mental. Who's, who's, who I just spent be... a billion quid in dictions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Alex FM 104.9. Um, we were just talking about people who do good work, you know, wandering up and down Oxford Street, giving yeah. stuff to the homeless and things. Yeah. And I was at a little, they have a little kind of music festival back in my hotel, hometown of Bristol periodically in the summer. They can never really attract any decent acts, but, uh, you know, we support Not it anyway. Not even Port's Head? Uh, no, they never tricky. Tricky. No, 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 no. no. Right. I think, that, well, this year it was Robert Plant uh, who sang um, lots of old blues covers and people were quite bored until he played Whole Lot of Love at the end and then we sort of went, Ree, you should have done all the old... Led Zeppelin, <laughs> stop playing all this other nonsense we're not interested in. <laughs> so I was set this for exactly, next time. Yeah. Robert, Robert, Robert. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, no. But um, I was just uh, snuck off into the woods for, you know, a waz, because I'm quite rock and roll like that. And I was passing, and these are a group of people, and I've always thought they never get enough praise, enough credit, and I genuinely, and I mean this without, entirely sincerely, I really do. I don't mean to be, I'm not taking the mic at all. But the St. John's Ambulance people, they're absolutely blinding, because they are, they all look like nerds, I mean, they all look like kind of because they're normally kind of fat women or kind of or kind of well, blokes. I think, doing, I think you're doing very well for their um, their new recruitment campaign. Well, so, I, was uh, say, I think no, you're selling it to people who want to This is join. my point, Rick. Is that they've not changed the uniforms in like forty years. Literally. It's normally <laughs> yeah. It's normally the kind of the nerds from your school who went into yeah. it or whatever. It's kind of old people. I saw them. They were all sat around in this little area. No one was you know. They were just sat around. They were bored. They weren't really enjoying the music. And I thought, look at that. They're not. That fat kid over there, I, I pointed her out to my mate, and I said, see that fat one over there in the uniform? With the glasses and the hair brushed forward. With the glasses, hair brushed forward, yeah. the kind of blue navy jumper. Satchel. There's a little satchel, yeah. 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 He is never going to get off with a girl, probably until he's like 30. And yeah, even then, he, it's, he gets to lose some clothes. And even then, it's because he's, he's giving mouth to mouth <laughs> to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I thought he's never going to get anything. And I'll tell you this: all these trendy young girls walking around in their, in their, in their kind of you know cool summer gear, in their trendy tie dye and the like. I'll tell you, when one of them, you know, takes something that's a little bit dodgy that they bought off some guy with dreads, right? And then they're desperate for him, and they zip in there. Oh, quick, quick! My friend's, you know, passing out. She's had something. She's had a funny turn, and he's straight there with his water and his medication. Oh, yeah, they need him then, but he doesn't get any. Action the rest of the time, you know. She's human. That's what annoyed me about. It. I thought they're doing a bloody good job. They turn up at sports events, at festivals. No one gives them the time of day. You never hear any good praise about them, and they're there, sat there, Steve, hot or cold. Tell me the truth now. Did you join the St John's ambulance last week to get some birds? Got no action. <laughs> really? I had no action. And I've been passing some dodgy ease around all the festivals. <laughs> By the way, your dreads are awful. <laughs> you, can, you can see they're fake. They're made like, out of newspaper. They're awful. You really do look an idiot. But seriously, I'm all joking aside, I genuinely wanted to give some massive props. <laughs> 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 if I could give some big ups to the St John's people. Because I genuinely, without any joke, and I genuinely think they do a brilliant job. Could I just say how good I think the Salvation Army are? Because you see those elderly ladies with surgical supports, a lot of them, mm -hmm. all look like Thor Heard. Yep. Um, well, that's a prerequisite to get into that particular army. And... They play that bloody tambourine, rain or shine, <laughs> yeah. and they are just, all they're trying to do is, you know, save you from burning in hell, yes. and they don't get any respect. Of the Salvation Army, do they, like, would they have to get called off? Yeah, they'd be, <laughs> if we, if yeah, they, 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 they'd, they'd be the Gurkhas first, then all the regulars, then the TAs, I think then uh, it's... I think then it's sort of like police, lifeguards, lifeguards, like yeah, but down to down to I think AA, and then it's the Salvation Army. <laughs> right. We send in the Salvation Army. Obviously, if, if you know, we really have we lost a lot of yeah. casualties, sure. you know, and uh, they're the, they're the last to go. Yeah, but they are so, all highly trained, aren't they? All those old women yeah. making kill a man. Yeah, they're, with yeah. a single blow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, good, good, good to them. Good to the John's Ambulance. Good to uh, Salvation Army. You know, big up. But Pick I think we should just, you know, if I might introduce a new feature every week, let's just give some props. Let's just give some massive to respect that, to someone uh, who doesn't the, get enough respect. Yeah. Um, who doesn't get enough respect? Uh, who's done a blinding job? Um, oh, Mother Teresa. She's, she's gone now. She's yeah, gone. She won't uh, be listening anyway. Uh, who's the best person that there is? <laughs> who's the best person there is? Um, 
I, I tell you what, we're gonna take. I'm gonna call um uh either Carol Vorderman or um Esther Anson and say who's the best one you've ever met that you know did some. Yeah. All right. And we'll and we'll get heap praise upon them next week. Yeah. Great. Mm. What? I just don't, don't like you know. They know they know they're doing a good job. Right. If I did that job, I want a pat on the back. You wouldn't uh, need a pat on the back. And people are starting to you know it's like Carol Vorderman. I like her. She's all right. She does a good job. But now that better homes, they only tend to turn up at people who have had problems. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, well leave you can it, have leave a new it. kitchen. Okay, look, 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 wait, wait, wait. Go on, what do you mean? No, it's, it used to start off and it's like... Oh, I haven't seen better homes. What is better homes? It's, they, they go around and do someone's house up. Right. Do you know what I mean? But then they get, they get a bit of bad news and Carol thinks, I'll cheer them up, I'll give them a new kitchen. Yeah. And it, it annoys me because if you haven't had bad news, it doesn't mean... You're not worth a new kitchen. Did you, you send I mean? in an application? <laughs> of course, <it> is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You say that I'm I'm bald. I'm from Manchester. Well, um, if you'd written that, they'd have rushed round. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean that what they they say? So and so's had a, a bad year. His mum died. He lost his leg. Um, and all he's ever wanted is a chaise long and a hostess trolley. Mm. <laughs> and the annoying thing is, right? They might not be the ones who write in. It might be a neighbour. Yeah. But they also get something sorted out for them. Really? So even though the neighbours had a bit of bad news, they go, I'll cash in on this one. I'll yeah. send a letter into old Carol, tell her that, uh, you know, mum's passed away. Yeah. yeah. I'll get a new uh, conservatory sorted. Sure. And sometimes a neighbour gets a better deal <laughs> than the person who, do you know what I mean? The person who's had a bit of bad news yeah. gets like a new little kitchen, whatever. <laughs> neighbour next door. Leave the kitchen. Let it go, Carl. New, new decking in the You had to pay for your own kitchen. Uh, is do you know what I mean, now? though? Is yeah, all done the now, kitchen, kitchen sorted, the bathroom needs to You had trouble with the grouting, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Hold on, we have got we gotta do oh look, play a record, we gotta do the results. And then we gotta do monkey news. Could we quickly do the results? Yeah, well you say we've got to do the results. There's not people hanging on for them. No, no, let's let's do it and just knock it out there before well, uh, let's we play play. A tune, let's come out and do it. Eddie the hot rods, yeah, surely. <laughs> Anything you want to do, that's uplifting, isn't it? Oh. Oh, the drumming. Brilliant. Takes me back all the way back to nineteen seventy eight on XFM one oh four point nine. What were you doing? What were you doing? What were your memories? I was actually probably dancing around miming the drums to that in the bedroom. In fact, I remember. Were you nude? Were you nude? No, no. I remember. I think I had that one on a single, but I'd got it from an old jukebox, so it didn't have a middle. Sure. Right. I think they're called dinked. Right. And so I had to line it up really carefully, and sometimes by the end it would just slightly go out where the record was moving. Mm. Where I just had to. Interesting anecdote there. (laughs) Fascinating. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. What lovely insight you were asking me what I was doing (laughs) twenty-five years ago. Carl, quick, the results. Then monkey news. I need some monkey news, but I need the results first. I play it again and give the answers. Here we go. Friends. Songs of Phrase. Name what? the artist. Name the artist. Uh, right, it was... That was uh, Roxette, the look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we had uh, You and Cry started yeah. it off. Yeah. Uh, in 16. That was Dean Martin. Because oh, yeah. Jane... Jane's that's addiction. addiction, yeah. Because Ch- cars. Yeah. Chinese Philip Bailey. Uh, Philip Bailey, that's the second outing he's had. Uh, look. Last one, um, we used him for Chinese. <laughs> with those as a hairy Chinese kid. He's never got so many royalties being used in <laughs> racist game shows. Brilliant. Then Roxette and finishing with George Michael. Oh, right. dear. So, Brilliant. That, right. Who's the winner? Well, the winner, actually, it looks to me like he's got all of them here, uh, from Bognor Regis. It's Stuart Birch. Well done, Stuart. And you get that bag, bag of tat. Bogner Regis. Um, yep. Oh, just need his Text address. Text me back as well. Yeah, um, if you don't, just email in your address, uh, Stuart, and you can have those goodies. If you're not interested, don't bother. It's Steve. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. OK, monkey-related news from Carl Pilkington. Right. Uh, do you know the monkey that went into space? Yeah. Yep. It happened in 1958. Right. Now, you know that. Yeah. Yes. What did he do next? What, what did, what did the monkey next? do next? Yeah. One appearance on uh, Celebrity Squares and it was like forgotten. Right. Uh, yeah, cut a no- novelty record. Yeah, well, just like Rick Waller. I'll tell you what happened. He, uh, <sighs> he got back. And all that. <laughs> he got back. <laughs> Heroes welcome. NASA sort of said, you know, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where a lot of people think, think, you know, it all ended. Sure. Yeah. But NASA were like, well, hang on a minute. We spent he's a trained. lot of time. We've trained him up and stuff. So he's like, you know, he's saying, sure, sure, you know, I've learnt a lot, I've still got it all, I've kept it all, I know what to do. So they said, right, we'll use you. So he turned into, like, a bit of a trainer at NASA. <laughs> we want to send you out on the top of an organ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put Can on you... this little bellhop outfit. <laughs> Can you smoke fags? <laughs> yeah. I'll have a go. So he was, they were getting in new monkeys... You know, the the main man at NASA was saying, can you teach these the same? He's going, of course I can. Do you know what I mean? I remember it all. I know what's going on. I'll tell him what button to press, what to do in emergencies, that sort of thing. Um, it was technically sort of employed by 
the army. Right, can I, can, I just, can I just fit in here? I, I, I don't know the story, Carl, and I, I might embarrass myself here. You've got an army of people out there that have probably sent me uh, an equally um, deranged email from a different website, but I'm pretty sure when they sent the monkey into space, it was to monitor his physiology. He didn't... He didn't press any buttons or learn to dock or take off. It just it was just the effects of weightlessness and space on um basically a primate. I'm pretty sure he was tied in with electrodes to mm. his head. Mm. So yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, I people, could be but on. even if that were the case, and he had learned to press one or two very basic buttons... Definitely not. Definitely but not. But even if it were the case, I'm pretty certain they wouldn't have brought him back to train up Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely. Go on, but go him on. going, Neil, what are you going to say when you come out there? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was thinking of just saying, I know, I'm on the middle. Hello, it's made of cheese. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't what say about... That. I've noticed that you've got little legs, yeah. right? But mankind stepped forward. Well, how could I put that? I was just going to say, oh, I'm on the moon. It's great to be no, here. I wish you no, were here. I've got things over there, man. Yeah, go on. Anyway, basically, he got back. They sorted him out with a nice pension. He mm. was happy. Um, because of, like, the rank that he got, he, the, he was like, you know, he had loads of uh, medals and stuff. He <laughs> said, right, we'll make him a colonel. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like I say, he got a pension. Um, that was the end. He died in 1969. He was ba uh, buried with his wife. He passed away. <laughs> his wife. I'm sure. I'm sure it just goes on to a different website yeah. about something completely different. And yeah, you're talking like, about Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His page is missing. Oh dear. So well, that Carl. I'm. Like, if someone could call in, did they train Lyca the dog to sort of like you know dock and re-entry? Never made it back, did he? Lyca? Well, they didn't out, bother. We'll they didn't week. even bother. Didn't bother bring him they back. just sent him up there, and then they didn't have technology to bring him back. And they just went, yeah, that's there. That's brilliant. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Really? Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? Rubbish, isn't it? Sort of brought it down a bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the little monkey made a colonel. Hero. Big hero. What was he in? What craft was he in? Uh, Sputnik. Just hang on a minute. He was in um, Jupiter AM. Yeah. Let me see that piece of paper. Yeah, I, I, I can guarantee there's nothing there about his, his training other than... Let's hope he's not sick on the control panel when we shoot him up at 400 Gs. <laughs> oh, dear. That's, that's I love cool. the fact that you think that this monkey was a high... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do, do, <laughs> when, when you think of these things that are less in the monkey's face, do you think of the planet of the apes? Like they're sort of talking sort of chimps and gorillas and they're, they're in tunics on horseback <laughs> with snub-nosed rifles. <laughs> what do you think of? Just a little monkey getting on with it. <laughs> He knows his job, he knows what he's got to do, he gets on with it. Look, he's pressed the button, watch him press the button. This takes me back. Do you remember 1965, I think it was? We're going to use him to train other DJs. <laughs> yeah! <laughs>